This film is about Amersham Road and Evergreen Youth Club's discovery about the River Thames and the history behind it. So now we will show you what our journey consists of. We will show you interesting parts of the River Thames that you were probably unaware of previously. Now enjoy. A lock is a crossing in the River Thames where the water levels are different. When the locks are being used by passing boats, the doors to the locks will close. Depending on which side the boats are on, the water in the lock will rise or go down to the level of the water the boat is on. The doors to the lock will then open and when the boat is in the lock, the doors will close. The doors will then open and the boat can carry on. This lock here is, was built in the 18th century, um, not on this actual site, on a different site. This one here has been here for over a hundred years. What was the past uses of the lock and what are the present? Past uses, the, 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 the traffic on the, on the river was mainly commercial, barges carrying corn, um, all, all manner of goods but now people use it for uh, pleasure on holidays and, and uh, enjoying the day. What is the maximum size bay that can get through the lock? No two locks are the same size, so um, with this lock you're looking at a boat of 110 feet by 20 feet. What does your job entail? Well, I do two things. I'm called a lock and weir keeper. And the two jobs are obviously the lock with the boats. Um, my other job is controlling the water levels and um, making sure, that, or trying to make sure, that people don't flood. It's a beautiful place to uh, work and live, and people get um, great enjoyment out of it, whether they're fishing, rowing, being on a boat, or just walking. Boats do have an, um, an environmental um, effect on the river, the wildlife and the surrounding um, countryside and property. Um, there's a speed limit on the river which stops boats travelling uh, more than five miles an hour, eight kilometres an hour. And one of the main reasons for this is to keep the wash that comes from the boats, that's the waves that the boats make as they go along, down to a minimum because you don't want these waves hitting the bank and making the bank crumble or upsetting the wildlife, the nesting birds and the ducks and the swans that um, breed up and down the river. So that's a vital part of uh, um, conservation and um, boating being environmentally friendly. And obviously boats going too fast would cause a, um, a danger just like cars going too fast on the road. Why was the weir built? The weirs were built, it's a historical thing, um, weirs were built by mill owners so that they could um, have water to operate their water mill um, to grind corn or work machinery. So um, they've been here a very long time, but also we now use them to control the water and, and try to alleviate flooding. What is the reason for flooding? It can be many things. Obviously, it's the rain that comes down. We try to control the, the flow of the river and the height, but if too much rain happens, then unfortunately flooding does occur. What are the effects of flooding? Well, it can be very disastrous for people with, if, if their houses get flooded. Um, it's very disruptive and, and uh, very distressing for them, so that's why we try to avoid it as much as possible.
The people involved in this exciting coracle build were from Amersham Road and Emma Green Youth Centres in Reading. The objective of this project was to build a Welsh fishing boat called Coracles and to test them on the River Thames. It says here on the tin. On day one, we met Alistair and he told us what we were going to do for the whole week. He told us that we were going to build a coracle boat. After he had finished talking to us, we had to start to build our boats. We started off by building the seat first as the whole boat was going to be attached by the seat. This was easy because all we had to do was sand down the edges and drill a couple of holes. Alistair went through all the safety rules with us. On day two, Alistair told us that we were going to build the base of the boat. This meant that we had to screw the legs to the seat and begin to screw on a special wood. He told us that the wood was called ash wood. This wood allowed us to bend it into shapes. We had to keep the wood wet so it would be easier to bend rather than us trying to bend it dry. If we tried to bend it whilst it was dry, the, mo the wood would more, like, more than likely snap. On day three, we got on with what we had to do. We started to build the rim of the boat, which is called a gunwell. This was what we was going to bend and secure the ashwood to. After we had finished building the rim, we were allowed to start bending the ashwood to the rim of the boat. This was a bit hard as we had to bend the wood, then secure it to the rim of G clamps, then drill a hole with a nail so it would make it easier to secure it onto. On day four, all we had to do was finish bending the ashwood to the rim. Alistair told us that we should take our boats outside and get the wood wet because they had dried out overnight and it might snap if we tried to bend it. Alistair then told us that we had to listen carefully because this was when we were going to paint on the tar. So first we had to put on the fabric called calico. Then we had to staple it to the frame of the boat. After we had done this, we were we were then able to start to paint on the tar. On day five, we were allowed to get on with what we had to do. We had to paint on three coats of tar, but we could only paint on two because Tina was gonna come down and paint on the final coat. Before we could do this, we had to move our boats round to the back of the museum so we could finish painting on the tar. After we'd done this, we were able to paint on the tar. The tar took about 25 hours to dry. After we had finished painting on the tar, we had to tidy up our things and we were allowed to go into the Henley Wind and the Willows Museum. Do four. That's a lot. Charlie. Tell the camera what the best thing about it was. So, hello, camera. Um, Hello, big brother. Yeah, hello, just turn the screen around instead of the whole camera. Hello, big brother. The best hello, big brother. thing that we've done today or throughout the week is <laughs> meeting me. Um, meeting new. I've done is meeting new people, painting it today, <laughs> and finishing it off. What's your, been your highlight of the week? I don't know, really. Probably the construction. You know, making it. What's been your favourite highlight of the week? Building a coracle. So you can see yourself as well then. Um, Nathaniel, what? look at the camera. What? What's been your highlight of the week? More likely painting it. Get dirty. 